Uh, today is the second to last youth group night of the year. Uh, next weekend is the final weekend of our normal youth calendar. Uh, we start then, we got all of May, uh, and then our summer calendar uh, launches. So with the summer calendar, it, it's live, by the way. Uh, so let me just show you on the website. If you go to, whoops, that's my Facebook page. Uh, browncorners.com or dot org, sorry, I just can't spell. Uh, and you go to the ministries tab. Are you to see the ah! <laughs> <laughs> It'd be helpful if you see it. Uh, you go up here to the ministries tab, Route 28, and then you get like all those giant pictures. You scroll down. There's a cool video. Mason made the video. Uh, all about who we are. We have a monthly newsletter. Our calendar is always right here, so you can click that, it'll send you to a new tab, you'll see Jace doing a handstand. Uh, but, if you want to put it on your phone wallpaper, or just have a size that fits your phone, there are all of these links, and in every one of them is for every device that's listed, if you want to put it on your computer, whatever, you don't have to, but it's an option. Uh, so, summer schedules are live. Those start in June. Um, so, like, let me just pull up the... There we go. So, uh, even though school isn't out until, like, the, what, 21st, we still have some stuff. Uh, we have, like, a, our final game night slash... So, when it's light out, we're going to do Capture the Flag in the Woods. When it gets dark out, we're going to come in here, and we're going to do the dark games we usually do. Um, and then we may have a bonfire, might not. We'll see. Uh, but the other thing, so that's the 21st. I also want to highlight senior night. Uh, so on the 14th, what's the seniors, what's your last name? May 8th. May 8th. So you should be out of school now. I think it's a Friday, well, yeah, it'd be a Friday night as well. Um, we're here. We're hanging out. We're going to party for our hashtag last ride, uh, and we're just gonna kinda hang out, have fun, uh, and just talk about like post high school life. It's gonna be dope, it's gonna be fun. Uh, and then, so squats, squats are not meeting until the 23rd. It's a Sunday afternoon. During the summer, we're doing squad lunches where I buy you guys lunch, um, and then we talk squatty things. And then, big ticket festival. Uh, oh, you know what's not on here? Laser tag. When's laser tag? May 10th. May 10th. So if you're going to laser tag, remember it's right after school on Friday. We gotta leave here. This is important. Laser tag, we have to leave here by 3.50. So at, right after school, buzz home, grab what you gotta get. 3.50, we are leaving means if you are not here by 345 to 349, you're going to miss the bus. Because it's like a, a two and a half hour drive up and we cut our session a half hour short because of the drive. Uh, so the quicker we can get up there, the quicker we can play laser tag. That is going to be sweet. If you're playing, if you're going, I need the online form filled out by May 3rd, one week prior to the event. Um, and then paper forms and money, I can get the day of, I don't care. Um, but I need the online registration form filled out. And then you do need both the church waiver and the laser tag waiver filled out. Um, and then other than that, register for Big Ticket Online. All of our, so the other thing I wanted to tell you is all of our summer event registrations will also be on this page. So like uh, under the wallpaper, so laser tag, go to this page. Registration form, that'll take you to the online form you fill out. Church waiver, laser tag waiver. Big ticket, registration's all here. When we do Michigan's Adventure, that, that stuff will be up there. You only need to fill out the BCC waiver once for the year. So you, if you were at Winter Retreat, you don't have to fill it out again. Um, Caitlin's question. So laser tag, yeah, we're gonna stop at a couple gas stations. They have like a little candy counter thing up there. Um, 
So laser tag, bring a little bit of cash. Uh, any other questions? Jalen? Thanks. This is Sahara. I don't know if it really is. It just sounded good. Capture the flag. So yeah, we're gonna do. So starting now, starting this year, like our big warm weather summer kickoff event is gonna be a giant game of capture the flag um, in the backwoods. Uh, so in the next couple days, I get to like run through there, and like, well, in the next couple weeks, I get to like map off the course. I'm pretty stoked about it. It's gonna be dope. Uh, any other questions on summer schedule? It's online. You can grab it. I don't have physical copies this week because I ran out of the good paper. So I'll get the good paper this week and have physical copies uh, next week for you. <coughs> Discipleship communities. So that's the Sunday morning stuff. Uh, 10 a.m. We're in here. Uh, we are doing our separate classes. So like high school and then all the younger kids separate until uh, the end of June. So we'll go through June there. Uh, and then we are going to all come together for one big, giant group uh, because our numbers drop and it's just easier for me to give my teachers a break. So, uh, but I'm really excited about what we're going to learn uh, both this rest of the week. We're kind of going to be talking about similar stuff to our Sunday evenings. Uh, and then this summer we're going to do some cool discipleship -y things too. So, that's all I got. Uh, I'm going to watch a video. Can you crank that channel up a little bit? Uh, and then we'll continue. The way of the world, the familiar, the routine, drifting toward the same ends, heading off in the distance, as if there was no other way. But when you meet Christ, you realize there's a different direction. A guide that invites you on a counter-cultural pilgrimage. You find a sweet harmony in conversation, in step with him. You realize the blessing that it is to be near to him. He asks you to drop everything, to follow the path toward him. And while the walk is certainly not without its challenges, you are not left unattended. But it's easy to lose focus. It may not be intentional, but if you're not disciplined to move, the gap can widen and you'll become used to your callousness. He desires to have you close and you remember how pleasing it is. But the affairs of the world can become rather overwhelming and there are times when you feel trapped, times when you get preoccupied, distracted, pushed, pulled, bogged down, and you realize the instant that you're not actively moving toward him, you're moving away from him. Remember who called you to this journey and run to him. with God and um, moving backwards. But before I get there, I want to share a couple stories. So this summer, or this past summer, uh, we went to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Uh, a lot of people, well, uh, quite a few of you went on that trip, and it was awesome. Uh, I got to drive a rental car for the first time in my life. Um, and it's probably the scariest, uh, it's not really a country, it's like a province or whatever. Um, the scariest place to drive your first rental car um, because I had to do so much defensive driving. I had to drive faster than normal because like the speed limits are really suggestions um, and uh, the norm is to just like do whatever you got to do to get to from point A to point B. And like we were up in the mountains, oh my lord, I was so scared. Like 
I would be like driving on this really tight road and like turn and look down and like 200 foot drop and no guardrail and like erosion from the hurricane. Uh, it was one of the scariest experiences of my life. Um, but it wasn't the first time that I had a scary uh, driving experience in Puerto Rico. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, I got the opportunity to go to Puerto Rico with the Spanish club. And on that trip, so we flew in uh, to San Juan and it was like 11 o'clock, midnight, crazy late. We had like an hour or so drive to our hotel. I'm in the back, uh, backseat of the rental van, snoozing, dozing in and out, dozing in and out. And, um, the main road, so it's just like a highway, divided highway, two lanes of traffic going this way, two lanes going that way. Uh, and there's a point where it becomes four lanes of open one-way traffic. Well, some guy who was under the influence of something was going the wrong way toward us on this four-lane uh, road. And he was not going slow. Uh, and I was sleeping, and I woke up to, ah! And it was my Spanish teacher. Uh, I had never heard his voice get so high pitched. What was it? It was a hand. It was totally a hand. Uh, and he like, he, 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 the guy wasn't even like close to us. It was just like he saw his headlights coming out of the direction. So ah! Swerved over the two lanes. The guy ended up like going into the median and like up and over to the other side. But uh, it was the scariest moment because like I'm sleeping. I wake up to screaming in a road to swerving. I'm thinking I'm dying. This is it. This is where my life ends. Fortunately, it didn't. Um, and I lived to uh, almost die in Puerto Rico uh, like seven years later. It's great. Uh, maybe in another seven years I'll have a similar opportunity. Uh, so then there was another time, uh, doesn't it, not in Puerto Rico, not like driving down the highway. Uh, how many of you remember a couple years back when I brought, well, when Cran Hill brought the rock wall for the church kickoff thing? We had rock wall, we had an archery tag. Why well, is the guy that brought it? I drove it, it's on a hydraulic lift, backs onto a trailer, hooks up to a van. Uh, so I brought this rock wall, um, and I did it all over the state. I, hundreds of times per year, I would take this rock wall to some church or to some event, put it up, put it down, back it up, back it in. Uh, I had to, so if you've ever been to Grand Rapids, been to the DeVos place, they do all kinds of trade shows, um, I would have to go in like partly way, part of the way through they like set booths and exhibitors up and like weasel that 30 foot rock wall and back it up. So I got pretty good backing this thing up until one day when I wasn't. Uh, we, it was rainstorming. So I had a guy who worked with me. He was my boss. His name was Dom, short for Dominic. Uh, and uh, he's a pretty cool guy, uh, except on this day. So if you're the like, co-pilot, he was the boss, he told me what to do, he told me to drive. I drove. It was raining, he didn't like to drive in the rain. I understand, I'll drive. Uh, we get back to the camp, it's raining. I've never experienced rain like this before. Uh, downpour, couldn't even see like to the back of the van, the back of the trailer, I couldn't see my lights, couldn't see nothing. Uh, so, like someone who normally backs up a trailer, looked to my passenger, thinking like, alright, you gotta get out and help me back up. He wasn't happy. He's like, Nah, dude. And I'm like, bro, I need help. He's like, you're on your own. I'm not going out of this. Uh, so the spot I was backing up was mostly open. Uh, woods on one side, probably 15 feet, which is plenty of room to back my eight-foot rock wall. And then there was a small little box trailer next to it. I backed into the box trailer. Uh, and I didn't just like kind of hit it. The entire length of the box trailer had a scrape. Um, the last half of the box trailer had a gash, like I backed the bumper of the rock wall in, ripped a hole into the side, ripped the wheel well off. I was pretty impressed with how much damage I did going like half a mile an hour backing this thing up. Um, so needless to say, next time it was raining, well next time we went on a show I made sure there was an umbrella, just in case, and uh, Dom got out, and he always, I just made sure that Dom was always Helpful. But so, there are times that we maybe do the wrong thing, or we do things not thinking ahead of maybe the repercussions, or there are times when we, 
weeks. When we experience someone that might be going the wrong way, uh, one way, or uh, like when we're talking about people living the wrong way, right? Segue into the message. Uh, sometimes we do a pretty good job of living the right way, and then, like the video showed, we get distracted. The guy saw a pretty girl and he got distracted. And then his shoe was untied and he got distracted. And next thing he knows, he looks up and he's quite a ways away from Christ. So the main idea for tonight is if we aren't actively moving toward Christ, we're moving backward. We're moving away from Him. And I love that video uh, because, so Endgame came out, no spoilers, not going to say, so Endgame came out. Um, and I love the Marvel movies. Like the first event, or the first Iron Man came out when I was like 14 years old. I've been watching them ever since, following them. I absolutely love them. Um, and I wa I've watched every single one numerous times, two, three times. Right? Um, every single time you, you watch one of these movies, you pick up something new, right? How many of you have seen NBA multiple times already? Liam, Maddie, I know you guys have. How many of you are planning on seeing it out of the time of the theater? A couple more. Oh, um, I am. Because every time you pick up something new. And uh, so on a small, much smaller scale, I watched this video five or six times this week, and that's what happened. I would watch the video, and I would pick up something new. Uh, I would watch the video, and when she's talking about Jesus tells us to drop everything, and the guy throws his bag down, and how, much, how often are we carrying baggage that we need to give to Christ, right? And I watched, he got distracted by the pretty girl. Guys, how many times do we get distracted by the pretty girl? Girls, how many times do we get distracted by the ruggedly handsome fellow? <laughs> so often! And we look down and we notice our shoes untied, and the next thing we know, next thing we know, we are quite a ways away from Jesus. <clears throat> so, uh, like I said, every time we watch, baggage, shoes, distractions, relationships, and then it ends. And I don't remember the exact quote, um, but it, it said, "Remember who made you and run after him." And the the thing that kept popping into my head was in Black Panther, another Marvel movie. <laughs> When uh, he's getting beat up, they're doing the ritual fight thing, and he looks over at his mom and she says, Remember who you are! <laughs> if you haven't seen Black Panther by now, you are way behind. But no, 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 Black Panther. And then he's like, Arm to Jala! And blah, 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 blah! And like, <laughs> destroys the dude, right? That's how, like, we need to remember whose we are and run after it. Um, so just like the video represented, we're all on a journey. We're all on an escalator. But the thing is, at the end of our escalator, there's two destinations. Jesus and not Jesus. Right? So we're all, the day to day, we're all in a routine. Whether it be monotonous, or monotonous, or familiar, routine, exciting, whatever. We're all on a journey, but we're not all headed to the same direction, same destination. Uh, we have to live, there, there's something that we have to do in this life to make sure that eternity is set, right? And we've talked about that in numerous times. You have to have a relationship with Christ. So uh, one, of the, one of the things I loved about the video was the way they talked about um, the Christian life as a counterculture pilgrimage. So what a pilgrimage is, um, it's when like everybody goes, like it's a journey basically, but like I think of uh, during Passover when all the Jewish people like pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem or the uh, pilgrimage to Mecca um, that Muslims do once a year, like and it's everybody and it's this big thing. And we are on a counterculture pilgrimage toward eternity. So it's only a two-week series, so it's pretty short. But we're going to talk about this idea of moving backward. We're going to talk about this idea of moving forward and what we can do to move forward and what obstacles we face. I talked about it this morning. We're going to talk about um, it's summertime. And we're, we are about to 
experience an incredible season of freedom. You don't have to go to school. There aren't really sports that you have to go to, but you go to them because like, they're pseudo required because if you don't go, you're not gonna play, or maybe you have travel sports, whatever, but there's a lot more freedom here. You don't have to get up every morning. There's not youth group. There's not whatever. Maybe you sleep in and you go to church at 11 o'clock, whatever. There's a lot more freedom. You get a longer curfew. But with more freedom comes more responsibility. Uh, so we're going to talk about, and I, one of the reasons I wanted to um, end with this series was because we're going to talk about what obstacles we're going to face this summer and how can we overcome those. Uh, <clears throat> because you guys have a choice this summer. You're either, or one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to move toward Jesus or you're going to move away from him. Uh, so I like that. The idea of counterculture pilgrimage starts by rejecting the things of the world that trap us. Uh, it starts by dropping our baggage and choosing to shift our priorities toward the thing of Christ. And we're going to get to that when we talk about the scripture. Um, but if we aren't actively moving toward Jesus, you're moving away from him. And as I was thinking about that uh, the last couple weeks, um, I was thinking about on what scale, at what point do we go from moving toward Jesus to moving away from him? Is it like a, a month to month thing? Like this month I did good, I went to church every day or every Sunday, hit youth group two or three times, it was pretty good. I'm mostly nice to my siblings and parents. Uh, or is it a week to week thing or a day to day? I think, and the more I thought about it, the more I, it, was, it was hitting me. It's a moment to moment thing. We've talked about in the past, every decision we make, we choose to either glorify God with the decision or glorify ourselves. We choose to satisfy the desires of us or we choose to satisfy the desires of God. See, this is countercultural living. Uh, but the world doesn't think like this. It's not normal to say, all right, I'm not going to put myself first. I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to pray that God helps me be more selfless. Or I'm going to pray for opportunities to tell people about my faith. These aren't things that the world thinks of. According to the world, we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, say whatever we want, act however we want, and be whatever we want. But that kind of life isn't one that's moving toward Jesus. That's the kind of life that's selfish, selfish, <laughs> I combined two words there, <laughs> selfish, and it moves away from you. This idea, like it says, like I said on the last slide, starts by rejecting the things of the world, dropping our baggage, and changing our priorities. We need to shift our focus from us to God. So check out this passage. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lusts is passing away, but the one who does the will of God will remain forever. Don't love the world or the things in the world. That kind of sounds like I'm, someone's raining on our parade. Uh, that kind of sounds like I can't have nice things, I can't enjoy my life. Kind of sounds like there's a Debbie Downer up in heaven that's holding back all these cool things that I see. But that's not the case. Uh, see, God created everything. We look at the Genesis account. God created everything that was good. Guess what? Man messed it up. I'm not going to get into that right now. But God created things for us to enjoy. But we can't prioritize our things over Him. There's a, we've talked about the Ten Commandments, uh, or a specific commandment a while back. Uh, you shall not have any other gods before me. Don't, it was basically talking about idolatry. We can't have idols. We can't put our things above God. Sometimes it's video games. Sometimes it's a relationship. An idol is any obstacle that we put between us and God. And that's what we're talking about here. 
God, God wants us to have this amazing, abundant life, but in order for that to happen, we have to choose to follow Him, and we have to say, God, what, what do you have for me? And that is a super difficult attitude to carry. Uh, because if we prioritize things over God, really, like, in our hearts, we're choosing to love things more than we love God. If, when my parents tell me that I need to go do the dishes, or um, my siblings hogging the video games, or um, I'm supposed to be at work, but I really want to nap, or I'm supposed to be doing homework, but I'm going to go see Avengers for the 17th time, that's a choice to prioritize worldly things or spiritual things. So we're, I'm gonna, there's going to be a few questions that pop up on the board. Um, I call it the moving backward evaluation. Um, I want you to read these. I'm going to get. I'm going to take a second of silence and just think about it. So you want to hear my evaluation? I was super convicted writing this message. Uh, because as I write things like, how do you handle your money? I'm faced with a scenario where, so I tithe. It's something believers do. It's an obedience thing. God tells us to give 10%. <coughs> uh, you look back in scripture tradition, most people gave like 20, 30, 40%. We'll get into that another time. But tithing is something we do in obedience to God. So I, I tithe. Um, but last week, we, I give digitally, give online. Uh, we were switching our stuff over from a company called Easy Tithe to Breeze because everything's going to fall off the breeze, right? So uh, because we were switching our stuff over, I'm like, oh, I'll hold off. Um, I'll wait a minute. I'll wait a few days and let that happen. Um, and then later that same day, uh, Dan, our worship pastor, came up to me and said, dude, 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 bro, Firefly has a three-year golf membership for $177. Dude, no, they don't. Dude, they do. It's an anniversary sale. Russ is the new owner coming in. He, like, dude, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You got to do it. I'm going to do it. We got to get Steve to do it. Jeremiah's going to do it. Everybody's going to do it. And he's like, Oprah, hand it out. Here they're going to do it. You get a golf membership. Did I say golf membership or gym membership? Oh. All right. In my head, I thought I said gym membership. <laughs> no, it was a golf membership. Uh, and a Firefly. So, but, side note, if you want to really, did you get it? Yeah. Uh, I was golfing the other day with Caleb, and Mr. Miller walked up, and he was like, yeah, so if you want, like, even think, it's like stupid cheap. Um, usually, like, I looked at uh, Eagle Glens, there's like 600 bucks for the year. Fireflies is usually like four or 500 bucks. Like, and I got $180 for three years. Of course I'm gonna do that! Uh, but I didn't tie last week. Because I was so focused, like I forgot, and golf, and me, and me. So what did I have to do this week? I had to double tie. Because like, I felt like I was taking that from God. I was selfish. I didn't handle my money very well, did I? And then I read, how do you manage your time? Well, I'm going to be honest. I watched at least two and a half hours of Brooklyn Nine-Nine at work last week. So I don't think I handled my time very well. And then, like, I go home and play lots of... 2K, watch more Brooklyn than I Caleb and I golfed. I golfed a ton last week, like, but for work. Like, one was with a group of guys from our church. One was with Caleb. One was with Dan. And we talked about work for at least the first hole. Um, if I ever tell, talk about how much I love my job, it's, it's mostly because of the golf. No, I'm kidding. It's not because of the golf. Um, but I'm not very good at managing my time. I don't, I don't have, why don't I have physical copies of the summer schedule? Because I don't have good paper. I spent like six hours on a golf course this week. I should have the paper, right? I didn't manage my time well. Not doing great. Um, what's your spiritual intake like? 
Did I spend, I can always spend, I just told you how I spent my time. I probably could have spent more than that. Do you guys get the idea, right? Uh, so, <clears throat> this might seem harsh, and this was, this hurt for me say, thinking about this, but if you aren't actively moving toward God, moment to moment, you're moving away from Him. That same for me, same for you, same for the freshmen, same for the seniors. If you're not actively moving toward God, moment to by moment, you're moving away from it. Oh, but Hunter, you don't understand my life. You don't know what I go through. You don't know how hard it is to make time for this. I just told you, I, I spent six hours on a golf course this week. I know how hard it is to make time for this. I know that it's easier to open Twitter or Snapchat than it is to open your Bible. I know that it's easier to skip church than it is to skip a basketball game. I know that it's easier to miss youth group than it is to adjust your work schedule. <laughs> I know that it's easier to listen to J. Cole or Post Malone or 21 Savage than it is to take the time to look up artists that aren't talking about sex, drugs, and all the other inappropriate stuff. I know it's easier to lie about your weekend than actually fess up and say, yeah, I spent most of my day at church on Sunday. I know it's easier to admit or to lie than to own your faith. It's easier to not tell somebody about Jesus than it is to say, yeah, I believe in this stuff. And I know most of us in here probably care way too much about what other, pe other people think of us. Or at least more than we'd like to admit. I mean, if, if we're really honest with ourselves, we probably care more about the people in our school, we care more about what our peers think of us than we do about what God thinks of us. If we're really honest with ourselves, we probably care more about what our peers think of us than what God thinks of us. I mean, if we didn't, our social media posts would be different. Our priorities would change. How we, how we talk and how we act at school would mirror how we talk and act at home. If we really truly care more about what God thinks of us than about how our friends see us, every aspect of our life would be different. Man, aren't you really bring this down to I Guys, I get it. I just told you numerous ways I failed last week. It is way easier to be selfish. It is way easier to prioritize these things of the world than it is to prioritize the things of God. So sometimes we have a choice in the prioritization, right? A lot of you, sometimes you don't. So if you're like, a, maybe you're a freshman and you don't drive, or your parents make you come to youth group. Uh, some of you, like, you just do whatever you're told, because they're your parents or your guardian or whatever. And you have to do what they say. That's good. Listen, respect your parents and all that. Uh, but some of you are old enough that you get to make those decisions for yourself. The first year, my mom said, oh, you don't have to go to youth group if you don't want to. I went, like, twice the whole year. And it was when they had a party. I was the guy that only showed up to the fun events. Some of you are about to get a whole lot more freedom. Seniors. Come to senior night. It's going to be dope. Um... Uh, so much easier to love the things of the world. So much easier to focus on the things of the world. When you go off to college, whether it's in a few months or in a few years, you're going to realize you have a whole, you have more freedom than you've ever had in your entire life. You can do almost whatever you want and not get in trouble for it. You have a lot of freedom. You are going to have to choose to focus on things of the world. Focus on things of God. It's easier to focus on things of the world, but it's never worth it. Uh, like I said, I, I failed a lot this week uh, <clears throat> looking to buy a house. So there are times when I'm at work, <laughs> Zillow.com, looking at houses for the area, or stressing about. All right, I have an entire
committee of people at this church trying to find me a wife. And as a young, probably a five, five and a half, uh, with, a, with a pretty good sense of humor most of the time, I, 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 I don't have women lined up, shocker. No, I'm kidding. We're not going down that road. So. Um, it's easy, guys, you know what I'm talking about, to get distracted. It's easy to be the guy in the video, cute girl walks by in the hallway, and walking backwards and trip, books go everywhere. I get it. I'm a single dude. But we can't focus on the things of the world. We have to focus on things of God. Can I tell you a story? Oh, sit down. It's, all right, so I told this. I did not plan on telling this in the middle school. This is not part of this. Uh, this is total side, side note rabbit trail. Um, I work, so you guys know I worked at Kansas for a ton of years. Uh, and the last, like, year and a half, there was a girl. Yeah, I, I, you guys have heard me talk about like, the girl I was going to marry, the girl, like the, uh, I'm the program director, you won't respect me. Uh, that, so, we're not talking, what? Cowbell girl, like the notes. No, not cowbell girl. No. Wow. This is fantastic. So, all right. With this last girl, with this girl, I thought I was going to marry her. Um, I focused way more on her than I did the things of God. I was working in a church camp. A portion of the time, I was one of the directors at this camp. And although I was working, I was doing my job, I was running, like I was doing my job well, I was distracted most of the time because of this girl. Things imploded, it was really ugly, you don't want to get into that right now. Um, but when I left, I made a promise to God. I said, God, I'm not going to let this happen again. I said, I way too often, and we know this based on Hunter's camp girl stories, get distracted. And I focus on whatever girl that smiles at me or whatever. And I don't run after you. So I said, God, I'm not going to be distracted by girls anymore. If it's going to, I had a guy tell me once, the best relationship advice I ever got, um, he said, bro, you just need to put your blinders up, because I'm an ADD squirrel. Uh, he's like, bro, you need to put your blinders up and just run hard after Jesus. And eventually, you're going to look over and you're going to see someone right running right next to you. And then he said, and then you need to club her in the back of the head, drag her to your cave and get married. Um, and it kind of escalated pretty quickly there, and I said, Eric... <laughs> He's like, all right, don't do that last part. But blinders up and run after Jesus. And if God has someone for you, they're going to be running right next to you. Or they're going to be running right past you because you're a dude and you're slow. And that was the best piece of advice I ever got. And, and this was right before I made this promise to God. And I said, God, if my blinders are up, I'm running hard after you. I'm not going to worry about if I'm ever going to get married. I'm not going to worry about a relationship. I don't care anymore. You're, you guys are all in the point where, like, that's the thing. you got to be in a relationship. It's a social status thing. It's a, some of you are um, in a relationship. Some of you aren't. Some of you are out of a relationship. Just got out of Whatever. It's very tricky to be in a relationship and not have that person become an idol in your life. And that's what I'm talking about here is we need to be running after Jesus with the blinders up. And then one day, someone's going to be running right next to you. All right, let's start that. So, I don't make a big deal about my relationship status. One, because I still live in my parents' basement. And that would be weird. Um, but I'm going to look at a house next week, so I'll tell you about that later. Start for a different time. Um, and two... I'm running after Jesus, man. Because my, the prize that's waiting for me at the end of the escalator is way too valuable for me to let some woman get in the way. No, I'm kidding. It would be my fault, for the record. It would be my fault if I lost track, got distracted, not hers. Um, 
So that's not my focus at all. That's not my priority at all. But guys, still get distracted. Because I'm a dude and I got a thick skull. So I'm constantly reminding myself, God, this was my promise to you. When I get this committee of people coming up to me every Sunday, you ought to meet my granddaughter. Where does she live? Oh, Wisconsin. <laughs> How often is she in Michigan? Oh, once every five years. All right, well, call me in four and a half years and I'll meet your granddaughter. Uh, <laughs> my sole focus right now is running hard after Jesus. Running hard after the prize that's at the end of the escalator. Um, I totally lost track of where I was. Give me a second, sorry. So, um, back to this. John ended his letter by saying, The world is dying, but the people who run after Jesus will live forever. That's why I'm running, guys. I'm running because God created me, He loves me, and He has a place in eternity, in heaven with him for me, and that's why I run. So run after Jesus every day. Every moment, make the decision to run towards him. Pray. Pray in the morning. I, I was telling, I told a story this morning, like, not, not in a humble, braggy way, but um, about six months ago, uh, I told myself, all right, I'm going to wake up every day and the first words out of my mouth are going to be, God, thank you for today. Help me to live for you better today than I did yesterday. Now, it's not every morning, but it's most mornings. I wake up. God, today's your day. Do with me what you want. God, guide me today. God, uh, help me to be better today than I was yesterday. And most of the time, it's like when I'm still like groggy and don't really know what's going on. Hey, God, I really, uh, just want to live for you today better than I did yesterday. And you know what happens? You know what I noticed? I'm praying more throughout the day. Because I either mess up and say, hey, God, sorry I did that. Uh, I'm going to hit the reset button. And then 10 minutes later, ah, I did it again, God. Reset button. Um, or, hey, God, thanks for like guiding me there. I made a right decision. And I celebrate that. Because we need to celebrate our victories. Pray. Constantly. Read your Bible. How do you know what God wants for your life if you're not actively in the Word seeking Him? Seeking that, right? Listen to Christian music. I enjoy J. Cole as much as the next guy, but J. Cole doesn't get you to heaven. And J. Cole has some pretty poor messages in his songs. In 21 Savage, he's a trash bro. Come on. Listen to better music. So, uh, the music we listen to here, I like dig deep. Like, some of it's like the big Christian names, uh, like Lecrae, whatever, but I dig deep and find the independent guys. And I do my, and I find good, encouraging music. Because I, I always say, what goes in is gonna come out. The times that I was the most um, vulgar and inappropriate and rude and disrespectful, was the time I wasn't listening to any Christian music, but I was listening to Eminem and Drake and Lil Wayne when he was good. Um, when you guys were itty bitty. The Carter Three. Oh, whatever, like way back. Um, before Relapse. Like this is when Eminem was good too. Guys, when you listen to trash, that's what's gonna come out. I was talking to my dad today. Uh, it was Farwell's prom last night. Um, and when I was in high school and shortly there after I graduated, I would DJ the Farwell Middle School dances. Uh, and I would always screen the music, and if they'd get requests, I'd screen the requests. And the kids didn't always like me because I was very strict with the music I would play because I have values, right? Um, and my mom was the one that hired me. And if I did, and if I played bad music, I had to hear about it. Uh, so my dad does the same thing when he DJs the dances, but the guy at prom apparently doesn't. Uh, he told me, I think they played uh, God's Plan um, by Drake. I think that was, I assumed that was the song, but it's a part in the middle of the song where like you're all you like yell whatever. Uh, but uh, super inappropriate, uh, and he's like, dude, 
I don't even think that guy cared to look up the lyrics. And I'm like, probably not. What comes in is going to go up. Not, maybe not right away, but when you put trash in your mouth, it's going to come out like in the weakest moment, in your weakest moment when you're really frustrated and you're really vulnerable and someone just like pokes and prods and pokes and prods, BAM! Bad words and disrespect in the poison that you took in. All right, that was another rap track. I apologize. Uh, listen to Christian music and surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you, who are going to challenge you, and who are going to celebrate the small victories as you run toward Christ. In your small group, you're going to talk about these worldly things. You're going to talk about maybe some obstacles that get in the way of us and God. You're going to talk about how, how, what's going to happen this summer. What are some of the obstacles we're going to face? Uh, we're going to talk about, and then next week we're going to talk about those things and how we can better run toward Jesus. So let's pray. Father God, I'm just so thankful that uh, you love us. Even when we make mistakes, God. Uh, we're going to make them, we're human, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean we, we stop running toward you, God. We're going to get distracted. God, I just pray that we can think about uh, the baggage we have to drop so we can run after you. I pray, about, I pray that we think about the obstacles that are getting in our way. I pray that we look at that evaluation and think about how we're spending our money, how we're managing our time. What's our spiritual intake look like? And I pray that we, we think about these things as we go small group, as we leave from this place. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for send, sending Jesus to die for us so we can be in relationship with you. Help us to put the blinders up and just run hard after you, God. In Jesus' name.